Hello! Hello everybody! We have a full channel. We have TK0423, not to be confused with CK, uh, TK0421. Why aren't you at your post? Uh, Epic Tech Master 112, David Wbury, Silent Searchlight, and many more. Um, yeah, I haven't actually got a plan for what I was going to do, but uh, what I was realizing last week was that we were talking about doing some silly things with rockets that were more like guns. And thanks to the power of procedural parts, it may actually be possible to build some sort of cannon-like projectile thingy, whatever. You got- he got armor jacked? What's armor jacked mean? Wait a second, just checking this is right. Incidentally, so yes, Belgian sour beer is what we have here. Uh, it is said it's been brewed with slowberries and aged in oak casks. It was pretty expensive import. And it's very, very sour. Mm -mm. Tasty stuff. Uh, so yeah, what was I looking for here? Just uh, an example there. We'll take the probodobodobodine. And so yeah, if you want to do a cannon style thing using procedural parts, we have the procedural SRB, right? And with the SR procedural SRBs, you can just like whack the thrust up and keep whacking the thrust up and whack the thrust up a little more. And you know, there's just real no limit to how much you can whack the thrust up with this thing. I'm whacking it as hard as I can. Obviously not the way, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pushing this button. Pushing people's buttons. Look, 0.4 seconds. And it's going to generate, when it fires, um, oh, thrust to weight of 500 Gs. Let's try launching this to see what happens. <laughs> so, I think it's going to explode. I'll tell you that. Uh, the question is how far it gets before it explodes. Are we ready? Are we ready for some explosions? Yes. That's what happens. We were moving at 1.4 kilometers per second when that um, fired. So, yes. Now we need to figure out how to make this not explode, right? Uh, revert to space plane hangar. I, why would I, I'm not going to make a Discord server because I have no time to keep track of all those things. That would be really nice if somebody did do see these things. Uh, that Starship Corp game, oh, man, I, I really want that game to, to work, to be awesome. But it's it's kind of disappointing that it's not better, I guess is what I'm saying. You know, it's... I totally think the concept is awesome and I absolutely want it to be the most, you know, perfect game. But the UI is very weak. Ah... <sighs> The game itself is really deep, like, I looked at the number of parts and how they interact and some of the procedures and, and the different tests and all that, and I was like, that's fantastic! And then I think the user interface is just really weak. Um, I, and I don't like the fact that the text is, you know, unscalable, so I really wanted to record an awesome, you know, 1440p resolution version of it, but of course that wasn't going to work. Okay. Wow. We, we, the heat shield managed to get us up to 2.2 kilometers per second. Let's just take a look. Uh, actually, it failed due to aerodynamic stresses. And then the procedural... So basically, we survived. Uh, now, can we fire this into space like this? So delta V is like, wait a second, this, the delta V was 1.7 kilometers per second, and yet somehow we were above 2 kilometers per second. How'd the nozzle get that big? I whacked it until it got really big. I whacked it and whacked it and whacked it. You think struts might help? Well, let's see if we can add some struts. Because um, this is really supposed to simulate a... You know, a gun firing. That's really what we're trying to do. So it's it burn time is 0.1 seconds. We are really pushing the limits here. Okay, where are the regular struts, not the super high-end struts? Just the e easy four. <laughs> we could put fairings on it, but we're, we'll work up to that. Now, actually, radial. So yeah, what's been going on in people's worlds? Have we been hearing interesting stuff? Needs more boosters. I don't think it needs any more boosters. I think what it needs is to survive. 
the stresses that are being placed upon it. Man, this is like the manhole cover to space. This is exactly what it is. Almost everyone selling DDR2 on eBay. Oh, you're not talking about Dance Dance Revolution 2. You're talking about DDR memory. I have to say I'm a big fan of Dance Dance Revolution. I'm also a big fan of DDR memory. But Okay, let's try this. Ready? Oh, yes! Oh, yeah, wait a second. You know what the problem was? I had infinite propellant enabled. Uh, I was experimenting earlier. That's why I was exceeding the velocity. Star Citizen 2.4. All I've seen from that is people um, with clothes. And people running around in space in their underwear. That's kind of cool. Although it slowed down. It didn't last very long. I like how this kind of flops like that. There's no... I wonder why that is flopping in that particular way. What are the aerodynamics of this thing? Okay, so I think we're doing pretty well here. Uh, got all your health... Why is my Delta V down to 541? We obviously need more... Uh, we don't need to whack this more. We need to make the diameter bigger. There we go. And then I could put like a little second stage in here, right? So we'll do that. We'll do two different stages of this thing. Because, of course, having multiple stages totally works. Yeah, we're trying to redo the space bullet thing. That's really what we're trying to do here. I'm going to put in a decoupler. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, a decoupler with a tiny little engine underneath it. Just to make sure it doesn't get smashed into its parent body. So, procedural rocket somewhere. D -d -d -d. And this one's going to be a lot smaller and a lot shorter, but it's still going to be insane because we're going to have, uh, let me see, how long does that run, burn for? 1.1 seconds. Uh, that could work. We'll just do that. Okay. Oh, yeah, do that. Move it up. And now we need our thing. And then we can go on to trying to go hypersonic while still in the runway. And that may actually involve many more solid rocket boosters like this, because why not? Uh, looking for structural decoupler somewhere. Oh yeah, that's right. Everything, this is my problem. Everything has been changed. That may not be the best and most ideal thing, but we're going to do that. Oh, region, region, region. X, 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 X. Because we like lots of Xs. Unless they're the evil exes, in which case, uh, well, wait, I'm Scott Manley rather than Scott Pilgrim, but I will deal with exes in whatever way is necessary. Lunch. Oh, sir, you are being hunted. That is a game that I am quite interested in. This is kind of my idea of how to get close to a Jules Verne space cannon. So uh, we have on the vessel chart delta v point what two seconds, and then the second one is one second. So uh, you know we'll get a decent distance on this. One would hope. Are we ready? Three, two, one. Yeah, and it didn't explode this time, but it the de you know the the resistance completely ruined it. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, what am I drinking tonight is Slowberry uh, beer from Belgium, uh, aged in oak casks and all that stuff. Can we do some Crusader Kings 2? I'm not... It's, Crusader Kings 2 is really kind of hard to do in, a, in the context of a uh, thing. Uh, I think... So someone's asking, Jelly Bob is asking why his um, install is not working. He's trying to install... Um... Realism overhaul, and I honestly don't have an answer for you because lots of things could be happening, and I don't know. Let's try this. That'll work. Okay. That is some serious drag. It doesn't really matter. I think that would be... Oh, biplanes! Oh, I'm so glad you said biplanes. Now I've got a great idea for a game that I really want to play. I really want to play Rise of Flight. Let's see if this works. <laughs> Did you see that? Oh my god, did you see that? That was hilarious. <laughs> that thing smashed into the back of it. 
What is my clickbait title? It just says something or other. Yeah, okay. Uh, play KOTOR. I'm not going to play Knights of the Old Republic. Okay. Uh, revert to space play. Let's try and revert this to launch. It... <laughs> <laughs> I gotta watch this again. Right, let's try this. Throttle and... Yep! <laughs> I like how the thrust on this second stage is insufficient. Uh, let, let's actually reduce the second stage. There is no unofficial Scott discard, right? It's not... It's not official, sorry. Let's make it clear, there is no official Discord with me because I am not discordant. Uh, why have we only got the one stage showing here? That's a problem. Well, I'll try that again. Launch. <laughs> so yeah, Rise of Flight, yeah, they, they have a, until June 1st, they have a sale on the planes right now. So it's one of those games where I am terrible at it, but I really just love puttering around in those old things. Wow, even... I don't get it, even with that... <laughs> oh, wow, this thing doesn't have enough thrust. I need more thrust. There, now it's getting really silly. <laughs> you might want to decouple later. No, I want to have this second stage push it even faster. Oh, you know what might be happening? I might have that decoupler. That's maybe the problem. I think the decoupler is backwards. Wait a second. Let's try this. That might be my problem. I'm going to cut the thrust on this thing a little more. Uh, do, 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 do. We don't need it. We don't need it to be quite so insane. Okay, let's try it now. Maker of Roads. Asteroids have feelings too. Asteroids have feelings too. What are you doing for Asteroid Day on June thirtieth? <laughs> oh, this is so joyous, but I just don't know how to make it work. And also, those God's rays are really bizarre. Also, I like the way the God's rays just disappear when it goes off the screen. That is, you know, annoying. Look, the probe survived. Uh... Okay. You're feeling sorry for yourself. Why are you feeling sorry for yourself? Because you have feelings. Feelings. I got some feelings and they're leaving me reeling and feeling sorry for myself. Yeah, this is a stack separator, stack decoupler. That... You know what? Let's come back out of this. Let's leave this. Don't save. I'm going to do this in the proper section. No fuel in the second stage. Is that the problem? It doesn't matter. There's... Oh, no repairs needed. Enter. We don't really care. We only want a fraction of a second burn on this. We want to see how many... Yes. Close program. We're going to run this again. KSP122. Meanwhile, we have to a minute to answer questions. So, uh, anybody want to ask some questions? Is there anything anybody would like me to talk about for once? You think I need more boosters? I think I need more powerful boosters. I think I need more beer. A waypoint manager obviously needs updated. Ah, yes. I have read about Osiris Rex, and we're waiting to see the launch. That's going to be super exciting. Oh, yeah, Indian rocket... Well, the Indian space plane program is all in the news right now. Why haven't I played Sir, You Are Being Hunted yet? I don't know, because I've just had so many games to play. And people always like to talk about sp uh, Kerbal Space Program. I am not the Illuminati. Matt Bro 100 is asking if I am the Illuminati. Uh, I am, however, occasionally part of the Illuminati, who are a Burning Man outfit that I used to kind of hang around with and occasionally DJ'd with uh, for whatever. Interestingly enough, today in one of my videos, someone made uh, some 
you know, Moon Hoax Conspiracy Theorist Nutter made some comment about, well, you know, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, they said they didn't see stars on the moon. Uh, to which I responded pointing out that, you know, if you are on the moon and you're Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin, then it's probably the most important thing you're doing and you have your schedule all planned out. You don't have any time. Every minute is planned. And really, to see stars, you kind of have to get into the shade of the lamb and you had to fold up the visor and, you know, cup your hands around so that you were getting cut down the glare. You know, Gene Cernan did that and he said, oh, I could see a couple of stars. But anyway... Asking Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin whether they could see stars on the surface of the moon is like asking the quarterback of the winning team at the Super Bowl whether they could see stars during the game. You know, maybe they could have. Maybe they could have stopped in the middle of a down saying, oh wait, I want to look at the sky. Excuse me, got to kind of put my hands up, you know, to shield against all the massive floodlights that are making it like daylight on the surface of this field. And look up. But hey, I have a job to do, right? I mean, come on, seriously. That's always ridiculous, people. Anyway, that individual, he then followed up saying, Oh my God, you responded within 10 minutes. This proves that you are at, that this channel is actually an official shill of NASA. Because nobody could respond to me, a random commenter, in 10 minutes. And I have to say, I have an Apple Watch. I get alerts for stuff. You know? So I think it was funny that he responded that way with his with extra conspiracy theories. I became part of the conspiracy, which is awesome. Because that's way better than the idiots that just are like, well, 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 I'm going to insult you now. And the best parts are the guys that try to insult me by saying, you're bald. Right? I'm like, okay, yeah. Yeah, great. I'm bald and I'm proud of it, right? Like, <laughs> you speak with a funny accent. Yeah, I'm Scottish. I'm awesome. You know, like, <laughs> you are clearly not a heterosexual. I, I have kids. You know, <laughs> does it matter? <laughs> it's really... I always think those guys are the best. The ones that just resort to insults. Because it instantly shows that they've lost any semblance of believing that they have an argument that is worth debating. Anyway... Uh, yes! Funny! Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. But it is always funny when someone is like, they try to insult me by saying, you're bald. It's like, yeah, and I'm proud of it. I, I cut my hair this short because I like the look. It's efficient. How do I get high red clouds on Eve? I have no idea. Uh, okay, let's try this again. Let's actually not do this. Let's do the octo. And we'll put a nose cone on it. We're, what we want to do is see if we can get something approaching space speed. Uh, and get it to space with like less than one second of thrust. That's going to be my rule. So it's going to be like we have a gun. And we're trying to get it near to that space. Uh, and I guess I could cheat. I could use something with infinite fuel or something. In Idaho, we're sort of scared of bald people. I'm sorry! That was my fault. I know I was drinking too much. Just kidding. <coughs> so, the way to get this, of course, is to have the epic um, procedural solid rocket booster things. Wherever those are. Oh, no, those are under engines, aren't they? Procedural rocket engine booster thing. You bet there will be explosions. Wow. That... Oh. <laughs> that is not what I expected. Let's fix that. 625. Okay. No. That's going to burn for 2.5 seconds. Let's make that burn for half a second. Okay. It says my delta V is 2 kilometers per second in half a second. Do you think this will work? Let's try it. Launch. Yeah, we should totally build a structural barrel around this. And make it just look like I'm firing a space gun. I am absolutely with that plan. 100%. I am really quite happy that 15 year olds can do amazing things with spacecraft. Yeah, so there's just too much drag here, right? So maybe if I... Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know. Like the drag from this engine bell is probably too high. I could cheat, of course. You could go into the physics menu, right? Watch this. So hey, how many people have uh, accounts on LinkedIn? Because uh, yeah, you should change your passwords if you use that password on any other websites. Uh, it would be bad. Physics. What I I can do is lift drag multiplier. I could turn this off. Like body lift, lift drag. Where's drag? Drag. Turn the drag off. Apply drag. Let's not apply drag. <laughs> Let's see if this works. This this will totally go to space. Ready? Okay. That what's really interesting is that thing was supposed to have, you know, whatever two hundred. Let me just see this. Revert to to launch. How much delta V does it actually say it has? Uh oh, uh oh. It's oh, it's gonna crash. I thought it was gonna crash. Um, vessel. It says delta V three hundred eighty six. Re revert flight to the vehicle. Set. Something changed. That's really interesting here. Now it says my delta V is sixty. This thing makes no sense at all. Solid. Why did the solid fuel disappear? That is interesting. Burn time, 1.6 seconds. More thrust. There we go. Okay. Launch that thing. Rocket engines are controlled explosions, but there's a lot of other stuff that goes into it. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, LinkedIn, apparently four years ago, somebody stole 167 million accounts. Uh, what they stole was email addresses and the passwords. And so even with drag being disabled, this thing still freaked out. That's really interesting. Oh, Ferrum Aerospace. Oh, there's no way to turn that off. So it's Ferrum that's responsible. Damn you, Ferrum! Ferrum. Not Ferrum. Ferrum! Okay, this is why I should have probably uninstalled that. That's the problem. Can I turn off Ferrum? That would be fun. Fun, fun, fun. Hey, uh, high velocity. Yeah, there's that's that's the problem that's going on here. Well, so much for that. Look, the thing has changed again. The solid fuel has just, like, decided to change. What? I'm going to cut down the thrust, actually. Not, you know, honestly, never mind. Forum. So actually, so I'm my office is really close to LinkedIn's building in San Francisco. LinkedIn basically are leasing a building in San Francisco near to my office, uh, and it's like a 26 floor building with glass panels and everything on the site. It has an amazing lobby that you can go out and hang in and hang out. It's like a public, it's a privately owned public space, and. I figured out that the surface area of that building is off the order of 167 million square centimetres. So if you could write your name in a square centimetre, you could cover that entire building in, you know, paper and then write down all the account details that were stolen. Obviously, you couldn't. Yeah, that <laughs> Ferrum just, like, says, nope, you're not doing that. It just goes... It goes subsonic almost away, almost right away. So if I detach that, will this thing kill me? That's the next question. Aerodynamics, utility, command structure, where is it? Uh, this, 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 this. Stack separator. Sure, do that. And then check the fuel, the fuel's down and silly thing, whatever. SRB type, surface... Uh, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I'm trying to catch up with chat here. Someone's making comments about salaries and things like that. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Okay, that's a good one. I like the way that just kind of sheared open right away. Is that because I had the things on the same stage? Yeah, it's because I had everything on the same stage. That's actually pretty funny.
Yeah, this thing just does not want to go. I like how this thing is still moving upwards. Oh wait, how? What happened there? Have I got that mod in that breaks things? Yeah. Yes. Yes, this rocket started bells deep inside the pad. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> that is the worst joke ever. This beer's quite good, isn't it? Ah, oh, man. Whew. I'm actually writing a detailed article, sorry, a detailed thing on um, engine bells. Opinions on the state of NASA's budget. It needs to have more of it. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know what, what Congress is doing, like changing minds again. <laughs> but uh, whatever. Okay. Let's let's just do this. Let's have another little rocket on here. Just just big enough to you know, give it a little push. A little push. Diameter that and then very 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 short that's that's not bad so it says it's gonna burn for one second okay and this is gonna burn longer once again solid fuel ridiculous numbers solid fuel why is it I think yeah definitely bugs and procedural parts whatever let's increase the diameter a bit and now my staging is all messed up. And I, I should probably hide this thing because there's no point in it being there. I said, make, go on the new stage. Thank you. I need you on the new stage. Because the old stage is for the amateurs. Mm -hmm. It's de it's 7 a.m. in Denmark, but you know what? You're in Denmark, so that's pretty awesome. Just think about that. Don't you have, like, awesome stuff in Denmark? Like, I don't know, beer? That's always awesome. <laughs> uh, revert to launch. I wonder what the budget would look like if we could... You know what? The problem is I, I, I expect a lot of people would just choose not to fund many things. Oh, wow. That thing actually died from overheating. Okay. That is interesting. <sighs> yes. Yes. You're in Denmark. Yes. Um, okay. Revert to launch. I can I turn off aerodynamic heating. Carlsberg. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to invoke the thought of Carlsberg. I mean, it's not terrible, but uh, radiation invasion. Can I just turn off thermal? Let's just go to cheats. Ignore max temperature. Oh, wrong button. Okay. This. And 100% and this! Yes! Okay, and we still don't get very far because Ferrum is just like, nope. I think I might have to kill Ferrum. Like, the the mod, obviously. I don't, I mean, I'm not gonna... Ferrum, I love you. I'm just gonna uninstall your mod and that's what I meant when I what said kill you. I mean, not you, kill the mod. Obviously... I would not be making threats on the internet because bad things happen. Besides, I love you in a kind of, you know, respectful way. Obviously, I'm not... I... This has just got way too complicated. At some point, if this crashes again, I'm going to uninstall Ferrum Aerospace. This happens. Can I post an Immergur link to whatever? And people are saying, yep, rip far. Kill. I'm not going to kill anyone. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, what's this we're passing on the way down? Is that the stack separator? And that's uh, debris. Yeah, here we go. Odds on the surviving? Over, under? Nope. And... Bombs away. It's amazing how close that uh, ended up. Yeah, let's go to the vehicle assembly. And... Let's just say uh, red rum, we'll call it. Red rum, red rum. Save that. 
Isn't there a way to modify Ferrum's parameters from debug menus and things like that? F A R aerodynamics failures atmosphere difficulty and debug full drag moderate low drag lenient let's do that low drag we'll do that that's for transonic uh, so we might actually be able to cut this down a little allow aero structural failures I am all about that uh, flaps voxels voxels aerodynamic failure atmospheric composition I could just make everything like super weak instead I could decrease gas viscosity and reference temperatures oh custom settings oh yeah you can like totally do all sorts of things hmm let's try this let's try this again with these new settings but sir the probability of surviving an asteroid uh, and <laughs> Successfully navigating an asteroid belt are approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. Favorite line in Empire Strikes Back. Seriously, seeing asteroids, like, changed my life. Mm. <sighs> Lol Hater is saying, are you Scott Manley? No. I, I, presuming he's talking to me, then I would say yes. But I am just one of many Scott Manleys. We are Legion. <laughs> it still just slows it down too much. The transonic drive uh, thing doesn't work. Okay. Revert flight to launch. <laughs> Asteroids have feelings too. Do you prefer the shining book or the movie? Um, uh, I would say the movie by Stanley Kubrick rather than the movie by Stephen King because Stephen King was foolish and decided he wanted to remake The Shining because he didn't like what Kubrick did. But you know what? Kubrick was a genius. He was a genius and everything he did was amazing except for the stuff that was rubbish. But even then, it was amazing. <laughs> kind of like the way that works there. Hold on. Put some backward-facing Sepatrons in the first stage. Uh, whose head is more... I think Air you know, Phil's is... I, I think Phil probably... Uh, I don't know. He's not really about aerodynamics. He's a proper astronomer, whereas I just play one on the internet. Oh, you know what happened? You know what happened? The, the, yeah, Barry Lynn... You know, here's the thing. So, many people know Kubrick for 2001. They know it for him for um, Spartacus, which is... I'm Spartacus. That's awesome. Doctor Strangelove. Stunning. Amazing. People for... Oh, and Full Metal Jacket. Holy crap! Your full metal jacket, like, after you've watched the start to that, the whole, like, marine training, you felt you'd been through marine training. Oh my god. I mean, maybe it wasn't marines, but it was just like, wow. I have, I have everything by Kubrick on DVD. Um, so anyway, uh, Barry Lyndon, a lot of people for, oh, Clockwork Orange! How could I forget Clockwork Orange?! Barry Lyndon, though, that, this is something that I find fascinating because he wanted to film the entire movie by essential by candlelight. Like, huh? He he got these in, he got these insane lenses that were had super they were super super fast lenses, very very short focal length, and I believe they might have come from NASA. So, you know, he used those so that he could actually film it all using the lighting of the era, which is just. A level of insanity that no filmmaker, other filmmaker, has ever... <laughs> it's still... It... Did you see what happened there? Hey Scott, did you know how 14 year olds like me... I, I have heard that 14 year olds occasionally watch me. Uh, okay. So we need to we need to exit out this completely. Uh, revert flight to vehicle assembly, whatever. There, Solid Snake comes through. Solid Snake twelve ninety eight comes through and says, the lenses that Kubrick used were the Zeiss lenses used by NASA to photograph the dark side of the moon. Fifty millimeter f point seven, right? So the the short smaller your focal ratio is or focal length, <laughs> like the 
the wider, the more light they take in. Point seven is insane. Oh man. Oh man, the other actor that was allowed to ad lib lines by Kubrick. I think it must be Peter Sellers. Silent Searchlight is is asking me. So he we're talking about Kubrick and Full Metal Jacket. R. Lee Emery, basically the uh, Marine Sergeant, Drill Sergeant, he improvised a lot of his stuff and he was amazing. Like that that is he is a character for the ages. It's kind of become the standard against uh, all that stuff. But he was supposed to be a, a, an advisor as well, and he ended up being in the movie. But yeah, Peter Sellers, he did a lot of his own lines, I know, because and he, he played like five different characters and all these other things. I, I am going to exit out of this, and I'm going to try removing Farrah Mira space. Let's fire up Seacan, because I, I want to get this to space. Okay. Oh, man. So other awesome things. Kubrick was very famous for really messing with his actors' heads. And I know that he did over a hundred takes of one particular scene in The Shining so that to get the right reaction from the actress. Uh, let me just see. Ferrum Aerial Space. Uh, apply changes. I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna shut this down. And then we're gonna restart this. Apply. Okay, so we got this. Now we're going to restart Kerbal 64 bit. This is a third restart today. That's right. I heard that Bert Kwok died uh, yesterday. He was Kato in uh, Pink Panther. No, he wasn't Peter Sell. He wasn't uh, Inspector Clouseau's nemesis. It was his, like, butler or whatever, who <laughs> the joke was that I've instructed him to keep me on, you know, training, or keep me on edge or whatever, and he, he may attack me at any time. Ah, yes. Yeah, anyway, so, was it, I forget, uh, I forget the actress's name. Was it Shelley Long in, in, um, in The Shining? There's one particular scene where she's like, just, Everything's breaking down and her voice is like, you know, she's just jittery and everything. And the reason is because Kubrick made her do like 130 takes and she just thought that he was going crazy. And uh, yeah, it's Shining is amazing. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I, I, I totally understand that it is not what... Uh, Stephen King wrote, you know, and I understand that Stephen King probably had issues with it, but that doesn't stop it being an amazing cinematic work. <sighs> Shelley Duval, thank you very much. Yeah, this is not a man cave. This is this is a basement. Uh, right, you might be able to see up in the corner now. We have the. Uh, we have the sense of the lighthouses, sorry. They're lighthouses for my Vive, which isn't actually being used tonight because it just messes up with things like that. I'm not going to play Elite or Star Citizen. It's just too too hard. You should absolutely see The Shining. You should go and see... You should absolutely make sure you see 2001, but be prepared for it being long and boring, but still an absolute classic. Uh, Full Metal Jacket, absolutely watch that. Doctor Strangelove, whole... I mean, seriously. Even the, the totally corporate movie that he made, uh, Spartacus, that's amazing! Oh, man. And yes, I will say, I have two controllers for my Vive. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at my hands on these things. Oh, yeah. And the triggers, they work now. Yes, HTC finally came through. It only took them two weeks. And I am grateful, eventually. The ultimate question is... What... Uh, yes. Is Star Citizen not... Ba it depends. Look, Star Citizen is... If you can get past the bugs, you've got a good couple of hours of gameplay. And... Yeah. 
you know, you have Arena Commander, which can be fun, but it there's not that much unless you start messing around with bugs, right? Did I get a chance to try out Job Simulator? No, because Orion just keeps playing Job Simulator all the time. <laughs> so what is 6 times 7? That's roughly the dimension of this uh, room-sized area that I have to use my VR setup in. Huh. Okay, let's try this. Red Ram. 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 Uh, okay, so... Ignore max temperature. Physics. Drag. Apply drag. Uh, let's try this. And I'll say, 2010, a lot of people really diss that movie, but that's partly because it exists in the shadow of 2001. And I'm going to say, 2001, it really is terribly boring at times. It's a lot of just like, you know, perfectly framed, perfectly shot stuff moving around in space beautifully. And it's hard to fault that, but 2010 actually had a story and like, you know, drama. And there was a like, oh my god, are they going to make it? I loved that movie. Uh, and it had Helen Mirren in it. So, you know, that wins more points. See, now, now it works! Yes! Let's turn drag back on. <laughs> I like how we still have several Gs of deceleration at this altitude. Okay, so that, that shot is up to altitude. So now, let's actually revert flight. See if we have drag on, see what happens. Wow, Epic Tech Master is telling me he is planning to maybe do own research project on exoplanets at an observatory. I'm so jealous of you because you actually have the effort to uh, <laughs> to to get through and do the science. And yes, Class Five shoot storm. Hey, I uh, love you too in a full hetero way. Don't worry. Uh, also, make sure you charge your iPad. Favorite Star Trek movie is Star Trek Two: The Wrath of God. I mean, it's really difficult to fault Wrath of Khan! Because, man, yeah, it, it is fantastic. Uh, and, you know, I'm quite forgiving of Star Trek Into Darkness because every time, you know, Khan is on screen, he is awesome! Like, Benedict Cumberbatch, I'm sorry, I, I, you know, yeah. Oh, man, awesome dude. Okay, let's try this now. Bingo, and... Bingo! Okay, now, two kilometers per second. Will it get to space? I think this will get to space. Oh, 125, will it get there? There we go. Finally! That's pretty good. You don't hear any shh when I speak. Uh, it's probably because I have pop filters and which don't actually help that. No, I just got a decent. Um, it's snowball. It's one of these. It's spherical, and I put it on the thing, and I have a big thing here. Yes, it was ferum. Ferum. Yes. Ah oh, man. <laughs> Shatner is awesome as well. I'm, I'm like, okay, so that is us. We've created our own project harp. Now we need to put a gun barrel around it, right? Okay, so now can I get to that speed faster? That's the next question. Okay, that what is a pop filter? A pop filter is a mesh and what it does is the big powerful low frequency sound waves they hit it and they break up into smaller sound waves so pop sounds really bad without a pop filter and the pop filter fixes things yes my favorite food is probably all sorts of dim sum actually i like sushi as well i like anything that's kind of fingery foodie things 
why does this thing not show me the correct values? Okay, solid fuel, 0 0.7 and 0 0.8. Okay, so that's three seconds of burn time. Can I make this happen faster? More thrust. Yeah, I like how my total delta V hasn't decreased, but I've I've fired it faster. Uh, and I'll just increase this a bit. Yeah, one second on each stage. That's what happens. Launch. So yeah, I've decided after the sort of semi-success of, you know, can you learn uh, rocket science through Kerbal Space Program, that I really should do a, a spin-off series that is going to be called Things the Kerbal Space Program doesn't teach you, and it's going to be details of rocket science with fun stories. And I thought, let's start out with like nozzle geometry and, you know, uh, fun stories about how the space shuttles or nozzles are over expanded and things like that. There's, there's some physics and there's some stories in there to talk about. Okay, let's try this now. Fire! Fire! Yes. Now, does this get to space? Probably not, because. It needed to go slower, right? So orbit, yeah. Apoap's height drops too quickly. Where am I actually from? I'm from Scotland. Where do you think? What is even Indian style haggis? Indian style haggis, you can do uh, like haggis pakora. That's one example, right? Okay, so now the next thing we need to do with this... Oh, no. Next thing we should do with this is... Oh, actually, no. Let's do this. Uh, save. Leave this. Is the Martian scientifically correct? For small values of scientifically correct, it is scientifically correct. I can't teach you nozzle design. I can just talk about nozzle design. But, I, I mean... I'm sure there I, there was a Java applet which let you design rocket nozzles. I'm not going to go into that. I'm more going to just talk about how it's kind of this often overlooked part. And in Kerbal Space Program, you just don't have to think about all that stuff. Uh, whereas in reality, it's just like a huge part of rocket design. Okay, so next thing is... Do, 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 we need... We need a couple of these things. Where are these things? There we go. And I'll just take the whole rocket and move it upwards. No, I don't still live in Scotland. I moved to California years ago. Ah, that is... N that, might not, that might not work. Uh, so, the Martian. Uh, the Martian has a lot of things that are correct, but it also has a lot of things which are not correct. And you know what? I can close this, actually. Watch. What would happen? You would you would die if you tried to drink liquid oxygen. The Martian was pretty good, but there was like a bunch of things that didn't quite work. Um, and the Martian, the movie, was less accurate than the, the book. The book's great. I mean, it's, it's like a great page-turner type thing. Nice how far we got. Oh, you know what's amazing? <laughs> we went so fast, we literally dragged. We dragged the launch clamps along with us. <laughs> I, I remember Flight of the Navigator. Let's try this again. Uh, da, da, da. <laughs> like, let's let's put these on the same stage i was thinking that these would smash into each other right let's see if we can get to the end of the end of the runway before crashing <laughs> uh, am i excited for the new star trek tv series i am interested i mean i'm not as big a trekkie as i was a star trek a star wars fan but i'm definitely interested uh, okay, revert. I think I need to redesign this a little. Uh, I am in San Francisco. I work in the tech business, so, you know, I need, I am in no-cal. I am so no-cal, as they say. There we go. Let's try that. Save. Try this again. 
You want that worm monkey thing as a pet. I wish I could have met Chuck Yeager. I got to the surface of the runway before we were crashing. Right, are we ready? One, two, three. Uh, how far did we get? We didn't even get as far this time. But at least the launch clamps stayed where they were. Okay, so we need a slight adjustment. Yes, I'll, a body lift plane. Someone's saying I should build a body lift plane. Okay, so I need to somehow... I'm gonna... What I'm gonna do is instead of having the thing fall... I am gonna have the thing fall because otherwise it just smashes. You know what we need is launch clamps that retract faster. Uh, yeah, Chuck Yeager is very much alive, someone is pointing out, which is absolutely correct. And... I've never met him. Would love to meet him. Because, you know, he's a bona fide, awesome, you know, dude. Oh, you know what? Might be that my fuel has decreased again. Uh, wait a second. Let's make sure we've got that problem fixed. Once again, solid fuel. Not very much. Once again, solid fuel. Not very much. Let's go for it. I have to say, I was in Idaho, and they were very welcoming. Yeah, I was in Driggs, and we had... Everyone I talked to was really nice, and we had lots of great conversations, and yeah. So, I'm going to say, Idaho is cool by me. <laughs> okay, we'll try that again. Well, the problem is the decoupler ends up inside the rocket. That's the problem. So, because this engine bell is so big, if I attach a decoupler, it attaches inside it, and then when I stage, it just explodes. Uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to do this. Yes! How fast was I going when I left the runway there? Did anybody see? <laughs> And I get an, achie an achievement! <laughs> okay, someone wanted to see if I could go hypersonic by the end of the runway, but I... I <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, one of the actual problems that I noticed with the Martian, I don't think anybody's talked about this much, is... Uh, actually, let's go to the Space Center. I'm going to leave this here as a trophy. As a monument to, <laughs> to this. Uh, yeah. Um, so anyway, one of the things in the Martian that I noticed which was wrong was, you know, the whole scenario, which everybody's talked about, how the, oh my God, you know, the winds on Mars are not strong enough for this kind of disaster to, you know, to force an emergency launch, right? Okay, we get that. Everybody talks about that, and we understand that you had he had to fix the... He had to come up with a way to make everyone leave. What is overlooked is that they are 45 degrees north of the equator. So, since the area... Sorry, the Hermes is using a nuclear-powered ion drive... And is in a low orbit, right? Because the if you see the numbers that he posted, he talked about five kilometers per second delta v on the MAV. So that would be enough to get him into a low Martian orbit. But you would have to align planes with the Hermes. So if they had to, if the storm just came along and they launched at any random time, they would not be in an orbit with the same inclination as the Hermes. So there would be no way for them to get back to the Hermes. And the Hermes with two millimeters per second per second acceleration would not be able to get to them before they died. Right, so that's something that was overlooked. That they couldn't just launch at random times and yet the story made them launch at a random time. Okay, so I'm going to try and pause this thing. Ready? Oh, shoot. Darn. I, I didn't see that. I wonder if I'm going to go as far or even... Yeah, it still did it because I moved. I was moving slowly enough. That's really funny. Uh, yeah, they'd only get one window a day to launch. 
Unless uh, the Hermes was in a polar orbit, in which case they'd get two, right? Now, of course, the way to fix this is to give the MAV more delta V and put the Hermes in a geostationary, or sorry, Marshall stationary, a Martian stationary, a Marshall stationary, uh, an aero st Aries stationary, we'll call that a Martian stationary orbit, right? So then that would make sense because then they could actually launch at any time. But also on top of that, because Hermes has such a low thrust, it doesn't take really get to take advantage of the Oberth effect uh, by launching from low orbit. So they'd be much better off having that set up. And, and you know, I would totally... I would, I would rewrite it that way. Okay, so it's escape that I need to hit. Ready, and... Ah, yeah, 2.5 kilometers per second. Yes. There we go. Uh, but we need to... <laughs> it's not the max velocity achieved. Someone wanted to see if I could achieve hypersonic speeds before the end of the runway, and here I am. No cheats. I, it is a mod, but it is definitely a cheat. So we basically achieved orbital velocity before the end of the runway. Uh... And I will point out, this is actually accelerating faster than the sprint rocket. Notice the mission elapsed time is two seconds. Yes, it's hypersonic. It's about, um, f you know, six to seven times the speed of sound. <sighs> anyway. Oh, that's 11 o'clock. Oh, so now if it crashes, we have to go on and try something else. Okay. Oh, uh, man. That's really, really interesting. Uh, resume flight. And... Oh! Yeah, that still managed that. Yeah, if I go this again, reverse flight, reserve flight. Uh-huh. Yeah, it takes forever. Even at this acceleration, it would take an insane amount of time to get to the speed of light. I'm just going to enable stability control here so it'll actually keep my nose up longer. See if we go a little further this time. Come on! Man, that red rum! It really... It managed a good extra 100 meters or so. That's fantastic. Okay, so... In Tamarack, Idaho, it is illegal to buy onions after dark without a permit. People are still asking for pollen. I thought we'd finished that. I thought people were done with that game. Can I turn off drag and try to orbit at runway height? Oh. <laughs> yeah, let's let's do that. Hold on. Uh, revert to launch. A space bullet gold. Golf, yeah. I'm going to try... Let's turn off drag again. Well, actually, what's going to happen here is I'm going to go into space. But let's try it. There we go. And yeah, we just basically float around. Now, what I should do... Hold on. Um, Alt F12. Okay, so resume flight. I'm going to... I'm going to apply some drag for a second. And then a little more drag. Oh, there, 2150. That's pretty good. Okay, so Apple Apps' height is 22 kilometers. So we're kind of orbiting in the atmosphere. <laughs> Wonder how far we're going to go like this. Yeah, we're going to go all the way around the Earth and then, well, the Kerbin and crash into it there. That's pretty cool. I like this. We just need a little more thrust. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and many people are pointing out, by the way, that the launch clamps are indeed falling. <laughs> this is just so unscientific. This is... <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh joy. I'm f 
feeling such a joy tonight. I don't know why. Uh, I'm sorry, Mythbusters 844. Um, we don't allow any anything. I don't know what you're posting, but whatever. Oh, he's not listening. Uh, it is. It is almost a unit. Uh, Newton's cannonball. Okay, so what we need to do now, revert flight, is. No, Galileo had a cannonball, and you, um, what's his face? So this is twenty-four five nine. That's pretty close. Let me just see. Uh, we get zero solid fuel in this stage. I'm going to cut the amount of solid fuel in this stage. I was going to put more solid fuel in this stage. Two five six three. Two o four two. Just gonna try and put get the right two three nine two. Does that sound about right? Let's try that. We can't launch from K two. I could try, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. Aren't all can? Yes, technically every cannonball is Newton's cannonball. Also, every cannonball is technically Galileo's cannonball. But you know what? I uh, <laughs> we're not launching directly to the moon from the runway. Okay, uh, T. Okay, so what do we say? Apoapsis height is 118 meters. Okay, we didn't quite do it. Uh, let's revert to space. We need to do it a little more. And you know what? Once again, the numbers have all changed. I'm going to try that. Launch. Launch to moon from runway. That's a good challenge. Every cannonball is sacred. Okay, I just want to see because it seems that the numbers and the delta v estimates are inappropriate for the value. So here we go, Union, yeah, Newton's cannonball, take three, and let's just turn this off. Okay, so now we are moving at two, three, two, two, and oh, periapsis height is sixty-three meters. So we're we're gonna fly around the Earth, the uh, Kerbin and eventually land very close to the space center. So let's actually activate time warp. I like how this is flying over here. This is floating after us. Uh, so, yeah, what did you do today? <laughs> oh, yeah, this is so funny. This is... I mean, really, we probably couldn't do much better, honestly, in terms of uh, ap periapsis height. You think the other stage might make the trip as well? Yeah, I mean, we're both... They're both going to do this. They're going to fly to the edge of the atmosphere and then come back. And the real question is, where will they hit? Does anyone want to make a... Do you think they'll get to these mountain ranges or do you think they'll hit something else first? I'm just looking. We're at 13 kilometers, uh, and we're here. Wow, this is this is just like crazy. <laughs> uh, you know, we're just flying through the atmosphere at orbital orbital speeds. That's all. You know, <laughs> look, it's just me and my bros here. We've got the payload, and then we get Clamp One, and cl these are the Clampy brothers, right? So there's Clamper uh, and Clampy. Actually, no, that's Clamper, Clampy, and that's Clamper. It's really confusing, because they never always, you know, disagree on who's who. Uh, and, yeah, we have this one here. It's a uh, Red Rum Debris, and Red Rum Debris is going to disappear somewhere. We're at 36 kilometers up. He is actually below us, so he might be moving faster. Oh, and there's a Sepatron somewhere. Man, we, we are just like one big happy family. Yeah, pirate one two three four five six seven eight nine dumped toxic chemicals into the pool today, and I suspect that it wasn't because he was trying to be a very poor pirate, but because he was wanting to put chlorine into the pool to stop all sorts of horrible stuff that might grow in the pool. Now we're getting up to about seventy something kilometers. Yeah, we're going to go up to seventy seven. Wait, you're doing something I suggested. Wait, oh, I'm doing something you suggested? Look at how hot this thing is. Ah, <sighs> I'm out of beer. Wah. <laughs> I don't think... I wonder if I can do it. I wonder if you could fire it and shoot myself in the back. That would be really hard. 
Maybe I should be trying to go north and south or something instead. What are the odds? The odds of hitting the VAB are basically zero because of the rotation of the planet Kerbin. So I can't really do that. Okay, one shot, two shot, three shot more. Yeah, it's like a cap Captain Zinja Chichup, whatever. Okay. One tequila, two tequila, three tequila floor. Yeah. Actually, that's pretty terrible because uh, what kind of lightweight passes out after three tequilas? There will be a new trooper beer. That's excellent. Uh, yeah, we could bring up the chat into the chat because so people can actually see what we're talking about. Where is latitude zero degrees? Is it runway or launch pad? Actually, la neither of them are zero degrees. They're both slightly in the wrong place. Oh, uh, and yes, I need to bring back... Bring back the chat! Bring out the chat! Bring out the chat! As long as the nose is pitched up at launch, the periaps will always be underground. It wasn't pitched up at launch, but yeah. <laughs> I always hated up opening up the chlorine tub and getting in there to scrub the algae. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry, Shimmy the JJ is all excited about being on TV. This is not television. This is Twitch. There is a difference. Television is a far lower quality product. Um, you know, the, the thing is, TV doesn't tend to have live chat in the middle of it, so it's much harder to really, uh, you know, interact with your audience. Look at me, Mom, I'm on TV. Now what's the chance I'll collide with VAB? Zero. It is less than zero. It's basically not going to happen. We are coming back into the atmosphere, by the way, so I'm going to turn this around so we can actually watch it and appreciate the view in all its glorious gloriness. Ah. Lower quality like YouTube. YouTube's pretty low quality as well. Uh, actually, I think... I don't know, actually. Do I, do I even have that? Whatever. New from the makers of Perrier, Perry Apps, now with 20% more crashes. I wonder where we're going to land. Uh, what is our longitude, actually? Doesn't show. But this is us. Oh, here's the crater, so we're passing over the crater. We're going to zip over the desert. And notice that my Perry Apps... Pardon me. Perry Apps height is actually dropping, so we're probably not going to get all the way around. Hey, Benny Apogee. Funnily enough, you're late. We just passed through Apogee. Um, Periaps height actually went up. You know what? I think we have some aerodynamic lift from this thing. I wonder if I could make this work just a little. Maybe. Now I think about it. Uh, hold on. Alt F12. Uh, cheats. Let's apply infinite electricity. Right, we're going to do this. I have a plan. I'm going to maybe see if this works. Okay. So, oh, this doesn't have torque on it, does it? Yeah, it's no torque. I want this thing to work, but I don't think it has any torque. Well, never mind. Seven, six. Do you think we're, uh, we're going to get over these mountains? Whoa! Okay, we made it over these mountains. And we're about to get, to, we're fl starting to fly over the ocean. 900 meters, so my impact point is 900 meters below the surface, so we're about to hit the water next. Oh, wait a second. Oh, uh, let's actually, let's just see if we can skip off the ground. Unbreakable, not joints, no crash damage, right? Anything else we need? Okay, let's resume that. Because I want to see if we skip off the water. Nope. Oh, but look! Clampy and Clamper both survived. They're just sitting here, like, below the surface forever. I totally gotta wait for these guys. <laughs> so how far did we make it around? Let's actually see. Yeah, we, uh, were here. It's amazing we didn't get that far. Um, I'm not sure if there's a way you could fire a gun and still 
fly around and shoot yourself in the back of the head. I thought, anticlimactic, I thought it was rather excellent myself. Uh, no, we're not going to revert flight. Let's go to the space center. You know what? Maybe if we put something on it, which has, uh, if it has, has like, um, reaction wheels, right? So if we change out the pod, we might be able to fly this thing. Whoa, in the land of the midnight sun. This is really spooky. Clearly, I have broken physics so much that demons have now possessed the Kerbal Space Center. Uh, <laughs> so what we're going to do here, and this is my cunning plan. We're going to replace this. Actually, I don't know why I have that on there now, because it's unnecessary. We're going to get the bigger, more powerful one, because I think this has torque. Uh, reaction wheel that has torque. Torque is cheap. Ha 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 ha. No one's ever made that joke before. And then this. So now let's see what our numbers are. 1,000. No, we need more. No more, more, more. More, more, more. How'd you like it? How'd you like it? Fun story about that. The person that recorded that song was a porn actress trying to get money out of uh, some Caribbean island that had decided to stop mere foreigners taking money abroad. So I uh, recorded a song and took the tapes abroad and it turned into a hit! Wouldn't you believe? What are the odds of that? <laughs> well, I did actually turn off drag so, to be fair, the atmosphere disappearing isn't such a ridiculous proposition. Okay, let's try this. Three, two, one, and go, go, go. <laughs> okay, so now we're going 200, uh, and I'm actually using lift just a bit here. <laughs> I think I need more lift. No, nope, lift just doesn't work here. Yeah, no body lift. No body lift at all. Come on, give me some body lift. Body lift, body lift. Give me some body lift. And... Yes. Well, so much for that. Um, let's actually put some tiny little wings on it. How long does it take after shaving your head before you don't feel the need to compulsively rub your head? It never stops. I still enjoy the sensual feeling of rubbing my head. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Running my fingers through my hair. Okay, let's actually put some tiny wings on it. Because, why not? Uh, let's see. That's what I want to do to that. And I'm going to make these really tiny. One tenth scale, do you think that'll be enough? I think that'll be enough. And uh, now, of course, my numbers have all gone nuts again. 2.17. Uh, that's three kilometers per second. That's too much. 2.5. Uh, 2.5. Let's go with that. Let's try it. Body and lift, it's like a rocket shampoo commercial. Do you need body and lift? Then you need the new lifting body, Kerbal 9000 Dinosaur. Or something. <laughs> okay. Let's try getting this up in the air again. And where are those tiny little wings? Vertical speed. Where's my vertical speed? I don't... What, vessel or surface? Uh, vertical speed... Oh, vertical speed is going downwards. No! Come on! I need more vertical speed here! No, those wings are just not doing anything, are they? So much for that. Turning off drag seems to cause these wings to not actually work. <laughs> uh, what is going on here is nothing of consequence. Yeah. 
Okay, well, we could try shooting the moon with this setup. I think that would be a good plan, right? So let's do that. Um, my winglet... No, the winglets were definitely there. I could see the winglets. They're, and they're, they did not vaporize because we had that stuff enabled, disabled. So we're going to need... Um, more fuel. We'll do that. Four kilometers per second. That's good. Okay. That should be adequate. And then... And there's no solid fuel in this stage. How about that? Okay, now... Let's just see this next. Let's try launching this. Launch! The moon is such a huge target, but... We still have to wait for it to be in the right place. I know we can do this. Okay, stability control, map. Now we got to wait for the moon to appear in the right place. You know what? Actually, let's target the moon. Set as target. So when the moon appears in front of me, that's when we're going to fire. So we're going to have to figure out exactly the right time. And then hopefully we shall come close to the moon. This is kind of silly that we've turned off drag. But on the other hand... Oh, it's still there. Come on, show yourself. Surface, target, orbit. Ah, there's the moon showing up now. Surface. So what do you think? 15 degrees below the horizon? 10 degrees? I think... Uh, I think I'll go at 10 degrees below the horizon. I don't honestly know, but we'll find out. We'll see if we get before or after. Stability control enabled. Moon about to rise. Check. Thrusters. Launch. We'll fire. Fire. Oh, yes. Oops. <laughs> that was a slight mistake there. <laughs> After all that. Uh, awesome. Am I using SVE? I'm not sure I'm using SVE. Okay, so once again, need to target the moon. Say that's target. Stay on target. Stay on target. And then we're going to wait for the moon to come. It will be here at some point. There, oh, they, that's the moon behind me. That's not what I want. So it'll rise and we'll come over the top. And then, ooh, what a sunrise. Oh, what a day. What a glorious day. <laughs> I'm going to F5 that there, because why not? Okay. That and... Fire, 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 fire. Whoa. Okay, now we're going at 2.3 kilometers per second. Oh, and actually, look, Periaps is 48. And Apoaps, this might be cooler because actually, we're, we're doing, we're in roughly this. This is actually a really good Newton's cannonball, right? Because ap, the ap Periaps height is correct, but unfortunately, it's going to go down. Nothing I can really do about that. Ah, uh, well. I mean, I could probably turn this thing, you know, turn on body lift when I get higher up. Do I have Rayleigh scattering involved? Um, no. It's funny how this was, like, my best. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at the clouds. We're just zipping through the clouds. I'm flying over like this. It won't. It, I'm wondrous, just wondering whether it will get past the runway. To be honest. Okay. We can't really do very much. Uh, th the real question is: Will we get over the mountains in the desert? That's my question. Because it was these mountains that were kind of hard. How far will it get further than the last one? I really don't know. I I don't think I'm gonna get to that mountain range. To be honest. I don't think that is going to happen. The, there's no challenge. The challenge here is we want to get to 
transonic, sorry, sorry, hypersonic speeds before the end of the runway, and that turned into, can we build silly things that orbit inside the atmosphere if we turn off drag? Yeah, the rotation of the Ur Cur of Kerbin will take the airport past my landing point. Why don't I use Shadowplay to record videos? Because I use Bandicam, which does a bunch of things that Shadowplay doesn't do. Um, yeah. I, I was actually recording 8K resolution video of Space Engine the other day. Unfortunately, YouTube is having some trouble actually encoding said video, so it's a problem. Uh, I'm gonna just check my your creator studio. Leave this page. Yeah, I've been trying to get 8K resolution video playing again, and it's not been working so well for me. How much ISP does a fire extinguisher ha have? Also, flying fire extinguisher for fun and science. Um, that's a good question, but I think really the specific impulse of a fire extinguisher is probably around you know 60 to 70. It's pretty low because it'll be a cold gas thruster. If it's a fire extinguisher which has water in it instead of gas, then yeah, that'll be even worse. Okay. Yeah, she, I I'll, I think um I'm using Open Broadcaster for broadcasting on Twitch. Shadowplay has just never quite worked for me. Uh, no, I, an interstellar quest, actually, I originally used Fraps, and then what happened was I upgraded my memory, my graphics card, which I had more memory, and then that started causing Fraps to crash, and so I switched to Bandicam, and everything was a lot happier. Uh, I I used to hang out in free in free node, but I uh, haven't done so in recent years. What's the specific impulse of a pitcher throwing thousands of baseballs? Well, if your average pitcher is throwing a ball at, say, 100 miles per hour, 100 miles per hour is... how many kilometers per hour? It's about 160 kilometers per hour. And I, can, I can figure it out. It's about... Tw it, it's pretty low. It's, like, very low. It's, like, three or something. Play Space Engine. Uh, there's not really much playing going on with Space Engine. In fact, I think I might just call this a night because I'm getting pretty tired and I have a lot of stuff to do. Look at this. This is so beautiful. It is so beautiful, this. I mean, obviously we're cheating by turning off aerodynamic friction. Thank you. Shimmy the JJ is doing the math. So it's about 4.4 seconds of ISP. What you do is you figure out the speed of your particle in meters per second, and then you divide it by the, the velocity, sorry, gravitational acceleration, and that's what you get, seconds. Yes, we're about to fly over the thingy. You know what I mean, the thingy? Uh, yeah, there's a famous what, what if where you what happens if you would if a baseball pitcher tried to hit a ball pitched it at ninety percent of the speed of light. The problem would be that there would be hydrogen fusion and stuff going on. Play some core war. Core war is is not a game that you really play on Twitch. <laughs> the last I I mean I used to play it. It was like very much pretty much uh, a whole lot of. You know, mathematics. Can I make our sun into a red giant in Universe Sandbox? Uh, yes, I could just wait around 5 billion years. Here, just wait. I can do it in real life. If you just give me 5 billion years, we can make a red giant. Is that going to work for you? Okay, let's see if we can make it over these mountains. Per yeah, periaps is still negative. There's nothing I can do about that. I mean, I could turn on... Uh, where is it? Physics. We could turn on aero. Apply, uh, display aero forces in life. Drag profile. Drag curve. Thermal. Yeah, you see, if I turn on drag, then that's no fun. Why don't I get lift? I just don't get any lift when I disable drag. At least we made it over the mountains. So we're much higher up this time. And we're probably going more shallow this time. 
Yeah. Yeah, the, the record pitch, I mean, the thing is, baseball pitchers really aren't going to get any faster. If I turn off SAS, will the spacecraft orientation remain the same? I don't know. You know what I'm going to do, actually? Cheats. Uh, let's, let's just fire up the propellant. Are we ready? And... <laughs> I've now gone off in a completely different direction. Okay. <laughs> let's uh let's point my spacecraft whoa and we're in space let's do this let's see if we can hit the moon by doing this there we go what oh 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 that's not the way we want to go here we want to go upwards boy Oh, oh, crap! Now I'm going at 16 kilometers per second. Okay. Uh, moon. Why don't we just point at the moon? Why is the moon not targeted? I said as target. There we go. Okay, now... Where is the moon? The moon is there. Okay, so I need to fire this here. Now, I'm going to point at the moon and hopefully hit it. Let's see how fast this happens. Oh yeah! <laughs> 60 kilometers per second. How are we going to do? We're getting close to the moon. Are we getting... Wait, is that going to hit the moon? We're slightly below the moon, so I need to adjust for this. Okay, that says we're going to hit the moon. In fact, if I say uh, align target, there we go. Let's let's slam into the moon at ridiculous speeds. Uh, what is the G acceleration is is just zero. There we hit the moon. Ah and our velocity was 197 kilometers per second. <laughs> oh there's a Google's response if all the world's digital data were stored on punch cards how big would Google's data center be? Answer, really, really big. Uh, it was just like my comment about the LinkedIn hack, that if you were to write LinkedIn, the LinkedIn hack accounts on pieces of paper, then there wouldn't be enough area on the surface of the LinkedIn building to write everything on it. Where is the moon? No, it's still there. I don't know where we are. We're probably like buried deep inside the surface. Wait a second, is the... Maybe if I zoom out, we can see the moon. Ah, there we go. So, yeah, we are... <laughs> Highest speed achieved. My most G-Force endured, 1.1. I think there's a bug. Okay, look. Uh, 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 uh. And we went through it. And we went way inside it. There's the... The roof up there, yes. Okay, uh, revert flight to space plane hangar. We need to make some subtle adjustments here. Because the angle was wrong. I think one of the problems is the... Oh, wait, that's not right. Let's, let's not do that. Let's do another rotate. Let's see. I'm going to rotate another degree or so here. And it says 2158. No, we need we need more here. 3000, 3000, whatever. Uh, 4000. Let's just do that, right? And we'll obviously turn off infinite propellant. Now let's see if we can get closer to the... This is a fun stream, but it's totally not scientific. It's not real. You're not learning any Kerbal Space Program here. We're just being ridiculous. I'm just being such a, you know, ridiculous, ridiculousness, listness, this listlessness, whatever. Hit the sun. Yeah, we can do this, the hitting the sun thing. Actually, that would be a, a, a hitting the sun is harder than you think because uh, thermal limitations cause you to explode. So I'm going to try and shoot at the moon. 
that's what we're going to do. So we're going to get it to like 15 degrees, maybe 20 degrees. Let's do 15. Right? I'm going to hit F5. I'm just going to I'm going to move it to 10 degrees. That's pretty good. Hold stability and we got to do this, this, this. Oh crap, that didn't work. Okay. Uh F9. Reload. What is the intention? The intention of this rocket, this strangely adorable rocket, is to be faster than anything you've ever seen. And once again, target the moon. Set as target. There we go. We'll time accelerate forwards just a bit. I'm gonna get a little closer. And now we're gonna fire this engine again. There we go, three kilometers per second. So now, this is us heading off towards the moon. We're actually on escape trajectory. The question is, will we encounter the moon? I like how this thing is chasing us. Okay, so, well, as it turns out, we're nowhere near the moon. It's not even clear that we are ahead or behind the moon. <laughs> and of course, we bring the launch clamps with us. That's pretty funny. Okay, revert flight. Oh no, cancel. I'm going to reload it. Oh man. Yes, the apoapsis goes negative when you get on a hyperbolic orbit. That's uh, just basically what happens when your eccentricity gets above 1. I am gonna go a little past this. Let's go to five degrees. Yeah, if the apoapse is negative, it means you're on an escape trajectory and you've done something right, unless you were actually wanting to return to Kerbin, in which case, you're doomed. Uh. <laughs> I do like that the clamps really don't like being left behind. I think it must be something to do with the clamp animation not finishing when I pass 2.5 kilometers. I think that's what, what's really going on here. I think that's what we've been doing. We could get the steel cap going to orbital velocities. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? Actually, I'll target this again. Set as target. I'm going to start to see if this one is before or after. Ready... Uh oh. We're still going 3.6 kilometers per second. That's funny. Uh, and I am gonna go point prograde on this thing and it will eventually catch up. Some point it will catch up. I do have a little bit of fuel in this thing, right? It tells me I have. Oh, seven meters per second of delta v. That's that's gonna not help me. The these are procedural parts. They are the solid rocket boosters, and I basically created solid rocket boosters, which are just insanely powerful. So it's like this amount of fuel in this size of nozzle. So not accurate at all, but kind of funny. It is kind of funny. How much Twinkies worth of energy? That would be depend upon lots of parameters which I'm not prepared to calculate at this time. Are we ready? Okay, we're going at 3.5 kilometers per second and we get a Mooner encounter! So you see, we just need to let the Moon get a little closer. <laughs> so we actually f were flying sort of past the Moon. And we're going to bring our launch clamps with us. Okay, uh, cancel. F9, resume flight. So I'm going to let the moon come around a little more. We're not going to land on the moon like this. Not with 500g acceleration. That would be silly. We already landed on the moon on it. We made a crater. I mean, 190 kilometers per second. That would be a lot of uh, 
serious damage going on there. Okay, ready. Stability control enabled. Thrust and... There we go. Okay, now... We're, we're 1,000 kilometers from the moon this time, which is further than we originally were. But that thing is now following us. Okay, so we need to let it come around a little more. Uh, cancel F9. We're going to try... I'm trying to cla crash the launch camp clamps. I'm trying to crash the launch clamps into the moon. Once again, using just ridiculousness. We decided that we would take the ridiculousness factor and multiply it by... Uh, Graham's number. Okay, we're going to move that to there. We have stability control enabled. Fire, fire, fire. Okay, now let's see where we're going. And... I don't get it! I don't get it! We let the moon come further around? Uh, oh! Oh, yes, of course. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Duh. Duh. Yeah, okay, yeah. Because the Earth, the carbon's rotating faster. Okay, I need to... I need to revert this. Revert. Oh, cancel, cancel. Okay. I screwed this up. I'm actually going to launch again, and then I'm going to press F9. I got things wrong. Basically, I... I should have the moon lower on the horizon. But what I'm going to do is reload, hold F9, to, and then we have to come up with a better location for it. I am getting very, very tired. I I do need to actually get to work. I've got lots of things not to work. I need to get to sleep so I can get to work tomorrow. So I'm going to let this go down to like 25 degrees, which means going backwards in time. Gotta go back in time. And we'll just stay here so we can actually watch the sunset. There's the sun setting. And then it's going to go over and then it'll rise. Because this is just like the circle of life. Oh, yeah. And then it's going to set over there. But we want to get the moon when it's about... 25 degrees and then we'll save it right actually 30 degrees is a good place so I'm gonna save that f5 and I think I'm gonna run time forwards until it gets to about five degrees below oh there we go and then I think that will be sufficient there okay so now stability control enabled Throttle, not that it matters, but we're gonna fire, fire, oh, okay. Didn't quite work. F9. Do I get much street sleep on stream nights? I get a decent amount of sleep. I get, you know, maybe an average of five to six hours per day. That's really what I tend to do. Okay, and I did it again. Mech Warrior 2. Have I calculated the average speed of a fast ship jumping in Elite Dangerous? I did! Because I remember talking with uh, David Braben about it. There we go. It's 35, 75. And we're on the other side of the moon, 718. So, I think if we, if we split the difference, we can hit the moon. Yes, 16 million times the speed of light. Uh, okay, so F9 to hold quick save. Uh, so the important thing here is we are technically cheating because we've got drag disabled, but that's, you know, not not that important. We did, however, legally get to the end of the runway and hypersonic speeds. Okay, so we need to go run time forward just a bit to about there. I'm going to do it halfway in the middle and then let's get this right. Uh, yes! Now, are we on course with the moon? Oh! 23 kilometers! 23 kilometers! Oh! Oh! That's so close! So close! 
It'd be, I, I'm not going to make the launch clamps any bigger because this is so well uh, modelled at this point. Look at this. Man. You know, if only I just want the launch clamps to come along with me. It's possible the launch clamps are actually going to hit because they're in a slightly different trajectory. Also, it's possible the other stage is going to hit. Now, now I think about it. Let's get out of the atmosphere. So I'm just going to run out of the atmosphere, get into space. And I'm going to switch to the other objects just to see what they look like. Yeah, launch clamps, they're super clingy. You know? They're like, but you left before we'd stopped hugging you. We like hugging you. Okay, I'm going to switch to oh, the launch clamp. What trajectory is it following? <laughs> Doesn't even, it's just like, no, we're not even going to do patch conics for a launch clamp. Don't be silly. Okay, apparently, switching to the launch clamps is very confusing. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Here we go, the, this... What orbit? Oh, this is 85 kilometers. And the other one? There we go. Let's see what orbits this is on. 86. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. I'm going to relaunch this. And we're going to we're gonna do this. Yeah, I, I heard Epic Tech Master is re repeating his, claim, his comment about might be doing epic uh, exoplanet research for NASA and I'm like hell yeah that's super awesome I am so jealous but then again I'm not because I have a you know, fantastic job doing fantastic things and I do this internet thing for fun can you believe I do this for fun I don't know why you know you guys watch me doing this for fun because I'm just you know doing really silly things I mean, I'm writing articles and stuff. Okay. Uh, right, let's do this. One, two, three. Oh, man, didn't work. And we didn't quite get our orbit that we needed. There are, you know, I'm sure that people doing chemistry have all sorts of fascinating chemistry that they can discover. Just look at ignition, a you know, a, an informal history of rockets, uh, fuel, science, whatever. I'm sure there's plenty of interesting things that you chemists can be doing. Oh, okay, I didn't do that. Also, things I won't work with. That's a great blog. I wish there were more entries with it on it. Uh, do you guys know that? It's a chemistry... It's. I don't know if it's still in progress, but there was a, it was a great chemistry blog talking about things that would explode and whatever. It was called Things I Won't Work With. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I think Mcthulhu has it. Azido is a azide azide, right? It's like Azido de base. Wop, 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 wop. If you're a raver, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, bingo. In the middle. In the middle. And... There we go. Everything falling away. And... We shot the moon. I did have a vibe. And I do have... Uh, I was doing stuff. Yes. Azo, Azide, Azide. Yes, it's, it's a whole bunch of fun stuff. <sighs> nice. So we can follow these launch clamps on their journey to the moon. So if I hit the moon with launch clamps, that's some sort of record, right? Ah, oh, yes. And people are now singing. Fly me to the moon and let me swing among the stars. Crash into the moon with my clampy friends and cars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it that we have nerd chemistry chat going on here. Ah, uh, yes. I, You know, I'm really happy because uh, I did like a very simple explanation of organic chemistry to Orion. I taught him about 
basically like bond counts, you know, for hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. And he knows, you know, the numbers. He knows how many bonds each one's supposed to have. And so I can draw up diagrams and he, he knows the, like, the bonding numbers. He's really quite excited by it. So I've also been showing him uh, periodic videos. Uh, he likes that because things explode. The Clamp, an unexpected journey to the moon. Okay, we're almost there. It's going to take us one hour to get to the moon. I wonder how close these things will be when I get to the moon. Now, if I do regular time acceleration, that works. Oh, that's 26. No, no, they stopped moving. No, I want to bring the launch clamps with me. Okay. Oh, we got it. We got to redo this. Oh, man. It's like it's oh man. I am conflicted. I am conflicted here. Resume flight. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have to come back. To get the launch clamps to the moon, I have to do physical time acceleration. Right? That's what's going to have to happen here. Because as soon as I did, um, you know, regular time acceleration, they stopped moving. They were just like, nope, we're not going to the moon. So I am going to have to do this again. And it is 10 to 12 and I really need to get some sleep. So apologies, but we can only have these regular boring projectiles hitting the moon. The Clampy Bros are once are doomed to hold hands in space above Earth. Forever. Yeah, I've, 15 minutes I really don't have the time for. And the, the problem is it's not just waiting... 15 minutes, but I have to keep trying until I got that shot to work, right? <laughs> At least the other ones are coming with me, right? No, they're not. Where's my friends? They must be there somewhere. The debris is out there. Oh, no, the debris has been removed. It got really confused too. Red rum debris is in low Earth orbit. That's really confusing. Oh, hey, moon. Ah, oh, you. The moon. It's a big, nice, round sound. I wonder if it will be my friend. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Wow, you guys are... Uh, the, the chemistry chat is really fascinating. I don't know any of this stuff. Like, I can barely keep up with basic chemistry. I have... You know, I have a rough idea about stuff that goes on, but it's so beyond me, you know, to do this at a university level. So I've not... You know... <laughs> oh, man. I know... I know evacuated a town in Freiburg when a vial spell spilled in the warehouse. That's great. Here we go. 12 seconds to impact. This is my gun. And 1.2 kilometers per second. Game over. Game over, man. Game over. Now what are we going to do? I'm going to go to bed. That's what I'm going to do. I'm tired. It's, you know, midnight. I get work early in the morning. Well, I get kids early in the morning and then work after that. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a good night. I'm going to do things. And this is as close to an Orion rocket as we're going to do tonight. Hope you guys have an awesome time. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.